Lindsay and today we are going to be talking about IVF, what I wish I knew and what I've learned. Uh, if you guys haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are a fun family and we have lots going on this year, so stay tuned. right into it I can go on and talk about it and everything but let's just get right into it the first thing I've learned about IVF <laughs> is you are not in control as much as the research that you guys do or as much as you think you know you don't know and you're not in control if you think you know your body you don't know your body um, I don't know if you guys know our situation but we did go through IVF once before and we had a failed one and I do have two kids from a previous marriage, so I was like, I got this in the bag. Like, there's nothing wrong with me. They didn't, couldn't find anything. We had an 80% chance. We did the PGS testing. We had two normal embryos. Like, I was like, we got this. And then it failed, which obviously was devastating because um, we were, like, so sure of it. And I remember making a video saying, what if IVF fails? But I was like, it's not going to. But... That's number one. If you think you know your body and you think you know what's going on, you don't. <laughs> number two, I would say is ask lots and lots of questions. Um, I was doing constant research, this and that, and there were still things I was very unsure of. Um, so make sure you ask lots of questions because if you don't, then you know you might miss out on something that you write about as far as what worked for somebody and what didn't work for them and I see it over and over again the reason why people's IVF fails usually is not what my new doctor said was not due to the seed but the soil so our seed checked out everything was good with the seed and it's the soil and I remember asking the last doctor about endometriosis and she just kind of fluffed it to the side and we talked about it a little bit but the new doctor actually did testing on me um, in regards to endometriosis it's called like an APA test which is a blood clotting disorder um, which is what I ended up having so and I know a lot of girls kind of have similar situations they either have like the natural killer cells which IVF, uh, sorry, endometriosis produces, or this APA. And because of it, you know, you can't hold a pregnancy. So don't be afraid to ask about it and ask lots of questions. And, you know, just kind of make sure that you're hitting all the points. Um, next thing I learned is no matter what you read in all the little superstitions, it doesn't matter okay like the pineapple the um, I have it right now <laughs> the juice the pomegranate juice the acupuncture eating paleo all that like in my mind and as far as I, like what I have experienced it does not work <laughs> like you're gonna get pregnant if you're gonna get pregnant or you're not gonna get pregnant if you're not gonna get pregnant I did everything to the book I ate a healthy diet, I did acupuncture, I did the pom uh, pomegranate juice, I did the pineapple when I was supposed to, I did the Brazil nuts, I did it all. But because I had this uh, blood clotting disorder, it wouldn't hold the pregnancy. So it didn't matter what I did beforehand, um, it's something medical that needed to be fixed in order for me to possibly hold the pregnancy. So. Don't believe all the hype you hear. I know there's so many of you girls that are like, when do we do the Brazil nuts? Can I eat the pineapple? Can I get the pineapple core? Like, you know, it doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't matter. If it's gonna work, it's gonna work. I got pregnant with two boys before and I did none of that. So it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. And I know I, we all just want those tips and tricks and you know, the sprinkle the magic dust, like we all am looking for like what worked for you. But I remember my last doctor saying, you know, she said, if somebody said they ran 10 laps around their house and the next day they were pregnant, 
that would be a thing. So don't buy into that, okay? Um, okay, so next is it's gonna cost more than you think it is. And this is because not only are you paying for medication and you're paying for the actual IVF services, but if you do want to do acupuncture, put that into your budget. If you wanna do prenatal massages, put that into your budget. Uh, prenatal pills, folic acid, all the supplements, put that into your budget. Um, we actually, I did like do the whole, I ran into it thing. Uh, chemicals and all that stuff are bad as far as um, for your body beforehand and before transfer. So I did end up buying like the um, odorless, chemical-less shampoos and conditioners, which isn't cheap. So there's always these extra costs that are gonna arise. If you're planning on eating healthy, that's gonna be more cost, you know? So there's always more cost than you think there is. Uh, I did not test negative or positive for high kill cells, but my doctor thought it was important that I do the intralipids just as a safety net in case, because of my endometriosis, in case I do release some sort of killer cells, but I did not test once again um, for the high uh, killer cells. But I decided to go ahead and do the intralipids anyway because what does it hurt? It's only healthy for my body. First round it was like $500 and that was for before we did the APA testing and uh, second round we actually did get covered by insurance. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely an unexpected expense. We were planning on a fresh transfer but we ended up with doing a frozen transfer so of course that cost a little can you just find a spot to lay down? That costs extra money too. Third thing is our things are not gonna go as you planned. Uh, everybody is so not obsessive, but we all are obsessive about our numbers, right? We're obsessed about how many eggs we retrieve, how many fertilize, how many make it to day five. And we're constantly, I know you are, I know I am, everybody's on the forums and YouTube, all the social media is asking, how many guys, how many eggs did you guys have? How many did you have? How many did you transfer? Like we're all obsessed with the numbers. And the best thing to do is just not obsess over it and it's just your own story and you're, nobody's gonna be the same. One girl might pull 30 eggs and only two make it to freeze and there's some girls out there that have that pull only 10 eggs and five make it to freeze. You know, it's not, it's not gonna be what you think it is. If you pull a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have a lot. First round we had 10, they pulled 10 and five went to freeze and two passed the PGS testing. This time we had uh, 21 that they pulled and only two made it to freeze. So, I mean, it's a numbers game and it's not gonna most likely be what you think it's going to be. So, that's another thing. I can't think of anything else that I've missed. Um, not what you're going to expect it to be. It's gonna cost more than you expect it to be. And more people are going through it than you think. So I don't know what else there is, but I know it's a tough journey and it's very stressful. There's like really no happy parts about doing IVF. Um, the needles hurt, the cost hurts, <laughs> um, mentally it hurts, and especially if it fails. So don't forget that you are not in this alone, and if you guys need to, feel free to reach out to me. I am an open book. Don't forget, ladies, that God has a plan for us, and we will make it through. And we will all have our precious little babies before too long. I just know it. Stay strong, girl. All right. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Love you.